In this session, we're going to take a look at the application scheduler feature in Event Sentry that's part of the system health packages. If we install Event Sentry with a database and enable the scheduled database purge to make sure that data that's older than you know X amount of days is automatically deleted, then you will have the database purge package, and inside of that, you will have the application scheduler object. There's really two things you can do with the application scheduler. The first one is simply scheduling applications, similar to what you would do with the Windows Task Scheduler or with Cron on Linux, uh, Unix. You simply specify an application, a script, or how often you want it to run, and so forth. The reason why you may want to do this with Event Century instead of the Task Scheduler, for example, is that you can easily manage these scripts with Event Century. So you can create a package. So, for example, let's just say you have the same type of script um, that you need to run on multiple hosts. Then rather than connecting to each one of them and creating a task scheduler uh, task, you know, uh, you would just uh, create a package in Event Sentry and then assign this package to multiple computers. And Event Sentry would then take care of scheduling those applications for you. But another way users can use the application scheduler is to expand the built-in monitoring capabilities of Event Sentry with uh, custom applications and scripts. So obviously Event Sentry offers a lot of functionality. There's a lot of things you can monitor, but very often there's custom scenarios that uh, no software product will by default cover. And so the application scheduler is a very convenient way to sort of enhance and extend Event Sentry's monitoring capabilities. So for example, I'm gonna uh, go to a KB article we have here. Here's a, a how to and how can we list files that have been modified in the last X days. You know, sometimes you may have some software product a third party application that you're running on your network that is let's say modifying files and if it stops modifying these files you know that something is off something's not working correctly the application may still be running there may be other metrics that you can monitor you know is the process running and so forth uh, but maybe there's some sort of an internal hiccup and uh, every once in a while it stops working and the only way you can notice that it's not working is that certain files are not modified well so in this case you can essentially create a custom script uh, where you uh, specify a path uh, that will basically look at every file and uh, provide some sort of an output if the number of files or error level, if the number of, if the files have not been modified in a certain uh, amount of time. One of the nice features of the application scheduler is that events that you can actually log an event to the event log when the script has completed and it can uh, change, adjust the severity based on the error level of the script, right? So if your script returns zero, uh, indicating that everything is okay, event sensor can log a informational event to the event log. And if the script returns error level two, for example, then it can log an error. And another nice uh, feature of the application scheduler is that it will include the actual output from your script. So when you have a script that displays some sort of output when there is an error, for example, let's say no files were modified or files exist that don't that shouldn't exist or some other condition you know is not right then this information can be actually embedded in the event so when you get you alert email for example or submit it to some sort of a ticketing system then you will see that information in there right away right so this would also apply to the purge utility here so when that purge utility runs and that purge utility is actually referencing a built-in script that we'll get to that in a little bit so when that runs and there's an error any output from that script is going to appear in the event. So when you get that event emailed or sent to you in some other way, then you, then you will see the output of that script. So that makes troubleshooting a lot more efficient because then we don't have to go log into the server or review logs. The information will be right there. So in this case, we simply have a purge utility that essentially runs in the speci on the specified schedules. In this particular case, you can say Monday through Sunday at 11 p.m. And every time the script runs, there is an uh, event log to the event log when the script has finished running. And depending on the error level of the script, it, it will either be an informational or an error event. And there's basically three ways you can schedule scripts in Event Sentry. One is a regular schedule, so that's at a set time on set days. Or you can run it in a recurring schedule, let's say every 10 minutes, every 15 minutes. And you also have the ability uh, to restrict the time period. So you can say, well, let's, uh, we only want to run the script during business hours from 8 to 5, for example. 
or you can run the script only once at boot time. What you're running is completely up to you. It could be an executable. It could be a Perl script, a Python script, a PowerShell script, and so forth. There's a time limit that can be assigned to a script. So you know, if you know that your script usually takes, let's just say five minutes, you know, then you can set your time limit uh, to something shorter and say, well, I know if it should always complete within five minutes, if it runs, let's say for 10 minutes, then we know there's a problem and we want to terminate it. Then you can set a shorter time period. Uh, you can set it to uh, essentially to terminate child processes. So if your script launches uh, other processes, uh, then you can terminate those if the script runs too long. And finally, we have the isolation mode. So the isolation mode really means um, that you don't want multiple instances of that script running at the same time. This is usually something that comes into play with a recurring schedule. Let's just say you're running a particular check every five minutes. Let's just say, uh, enumerating files or whatever it may be, or downloading content from a website, checking a website and so forth. If that takes longer than the five minutes, right? Uh, then you have the ability to, to set the isolation level to local, which means that the recurring schedule will not start another instance if the previous instance is still active. So this is also the description we get here. Only one instance of this application schedule is allowed at time. If you set this to global, then it means that while this script is running, nothing else should be running on the system. So this basically blocks all our application schedules from running. Again, here are the options of the return of the error level. If you clear both of these options, then event center will not log anything to the event log after the script completes. So that's not uh, something that we usually recommend.